freak out. It's just me, Tia. I haven't been replaced. I just went to the hair salon for the first time in a year and now my hair looks a bit different. I swear everything's alright, calm down. Look, Pixie's chilling in the background. Always fine. Though she does look a bit dead now that I think about it. I swear she's fine. Trust me. So this week I bring you the fourth week of Journey Deck Guides. This one was quite interesting. You had to play 10 artifacts and trigger 5 traps. So what I did was I put them all together in one elf deck. Now this deck did surprisingly well and I even ended up climbing with it in pro rank. I think I'll be tinkering a bit with it and make a deck guide of it at some point with updated features. But for now, let's show you how it works. So for those of you who have never played a trap deck, it's quite simple. Traps are artifacts and they are a nice sneaky element that you can implement in your deck because your opponent has to guess which one you're playing. The moment you play an artifact, it's turned upside down and your opponent can only see the back of the card. Some of these you can trigger manually by pressing on the artifact, which stands for the spring keyword. And other times you get more value out of it by not pressing it at all and letting it activate on its own. That's when it's called the ambush. So the traps we're going to be playing starts with the Markham Horn. This one gives adjacent units four points when your opponent passes. This is always very nice because opponents who aren't very experienced with this deck won't necessarily know what this card implies. So they might end up passing and then still allowing you to win the round. Then we have the Pitfall Trap. Now this one's quite nice, but you have to be very uh, careful about when you play it. So after your opponent plays a card, it randomly splits damage equal to the card's provision cost between all enemy units. So you might want to spend this one only second to last or last because that's when your opponent normally plays his or her biggest cards. So that's when the 10 provision or 8 provision cards come out. That means you get about 8 points of damage for this card. Now this is personally my favorite card when it comes to traps. And what I like to do with this is I play it with Irveth. Now Irveth can return a trap to your hand and then you can play a different trap in its place. But of course what I do is I just replay the card. So when my opponent plays his second card, the trap triggers a second time. All right, so then we have the Triant Mantis Stalk. Now you can either press on the card and transform him into his strike version. That's merely a six point card or you can wait for it to ambush on its own, meaning the next unit your opponent plays will get poisoned. So we don't necessarily know what that card will be, but that's why I included two Forest Whisperers and two Dryad Rangers. So therefore you can finish off the poison ability and get rid of a few cards on your opponent's side. Then we have Incinerating Trap. So you can either press on him and damage a unit of your choice by three points, or you can wait for your opponent to play his next card and then it will be damaged by five points. Then we have the crashing trap. Now this does quite well if your opponent plans to swarm his side of the board. So ambush, after two turns, at the end of your turn, this card will damage all enemy units on a row with the most units with two points. So if you've got a row filled with cards, each and every one of those cards will be damaged by two points. Now we have two of these in the deck and we can replay one of them if we want to with Ayurveth. All right, so we included Portal in this version of the deck because it is an artifact and also because it will definitely pull two four provision cards. Make sure these aren't in your hand when you play Portal, by the way. Elven Scouts. So whenever a trap is triggered, in other words, whenever the card turns around and does the ability, this card boosts himself by two points. So obviously if you have two of these on the board at the same time, they're going to end up giving you a lot of points. All right, now, Iris Gambit. This is the sole reason for our leader ability, which is Mystic Echo. If you have four more traps in your starting deck, which we do, Iris Gambit will play two of them at random. 
This is really nice. So he pulls out two traps from your deck. Always make sure you have enough traps in your deck for Irvith to pull them out. Now with Mystic Echo, we will be allowed to play a special card from our graveyard, a special square tile card, meaning we can play Irvith's Gambit a second time. This makes for a very powerful combo in a short round, especially if you use him twice, which is a possibility. And for those of you who don't know, Mystic Echo is going to um, get nuked by the end of the season along with the Skalliger Second Wind ability. So you might want to play this now while you still can. Like I said, I'm going to have to tinker a bit with it, um, at least next season. But for now, this is the best you're going to get. Uh, just in case you don't actually draw Irvith's Gamut, we have included a second special card, which is Morana Runestone. It's, it's a fine card, it's not that great, it's 5 provisions, but we don't want your leader to get bricked. So, worst case scenario, you get to play Morana Runestone twice. Then we have your artifact, which is Fain Death, always nice in a short round. So, whenever you play an elf, this is triggered, and it makes for quite a few points. That's also why we have a few elves included in this deck. We have two elven swordmasters. They damage a unit every second turn. Every time you play an elf, the cooldown is decreased by one turn. You have Doblathana Archer. Damage an enemy unit by two or damage two units by one. And you have Raya Dragoon. Always nice to be able to move some cards around. This is what he does. And then lastly, yeah, we already included the elven scouts. The serpent trap is a last trap. After your opponent plays a special card, this destroys the enemy with the highest power. So you want to play this at a time when you know your opponent is going to play a special card in that round. Now remember, a special card is any card with a little flame at the top left, not a trophy. So what does count as a special card is anything from Oniromancy, which most people include in their deck or to your faction's echo card. So if you see your opponent is going to be playing one of these a second time, then you know when to play Serpent Trap. Don't hold on to him too long because that might just end up bricking the card. And that is it guys, I'm now going to show you the game I played. I enjoyed it quite a lot and uh, I will see you next week. Good luck. Which helps to get on the best sellers list eventually because of the pre-order system. You've talked enough. So now, yeah, I spent a day or two just researching how to do that, and I am still lost. I have no idea how to do it. Um. All right. So we didn't accidentally pull the the bless one. That's good. Blitz. Uh. Get rid of Ram. Double on our archer seems good. And one of you. Blue or red? We are on blue. Okay. That is good. Get rid of a poison, I think. Okay, nice. We pretty much have everything we need. So we want to win round one, bleed round two, and push round three, I think. Most likely. Yeah, and then we play Feign Death round three. I think that's fine. So we start with Portal. There we go. Uh, what happened at the end of the last stream? You're looking forward to the bridge being built. Uh, the power cut off. Very fun. Again, it sometimes happens, again, unfortunately. Again. Damage a unit by three. Damage the next unit your opponent plays on their side by five. I think we do this. Okay. If you have four or more traps in your starting deck, play two of them at random. Okay, so how is this going to work? I guess he actually just pulls them out of the deck. So we do have two traps. That counts as the third. Hmm. 
I don't want to overwhelm him just yet. Transform into Tree of Mantis. Give the next unit play by your opponent poison. Okay, we don't want that yet. Hmm, okay, let's play this so long. Oh, that counts as a special card. <laughs> oh, he actually played it. Again, again. Yay. <laughs> oh, good stuff. Good stuff. Did not see that coming. I'm okay with this. Let us sing the song of steel. I'm new to the channel. I take it's been a good while since you last played Gwent. No, it's just I've never played traps. I don't know, I don't find it too appealing. Long live the king! I know, I, I played about last week. We we're still in pro rank, we're just not actively climbing. Uh, okay, so we are going to... We can't actually play Treant Mantis right now. And I don't want to poison him either. So when is he going to commit? I don't think he commits yet. Yeah, okay, let's see what we get to poison. Could be anything. And I'm not going to bother doing anything about that armor just yet. Okay. So what's the card we're missing? Return an ally trap to your hand, then play a trap. Okay, so we get to do that next round, most likely. So now we push him, and we go for a short round three and see what we can get out of him. Okay, really good hand. So we have a elf, a tactic, another elf. I say we get rid of the poison. Oof. If you have four or more traps in your starting deck, play two of them at random. So we do need to shuffle these back, I think. Okay, so we do have two traps. More. Okay, that's good. <sighs> Let's push, shall we? Just trying to think what we keep. Do we keep Fane Death for a short round three? So that has the potential to be very strong. I'm going to try this instead. Spalling! Okay. So what we played is the incinerating trap damage on a unit by three damage the next unit your opponent plays on this side by five which is fine damage all units on a row by one or after two turns at the end of your turn damage all enemy units on the row with the most units by two okay so crossing trap is ideal to play in a long oh, round a waste of time for bye mr drummer okay So I think we keep Pitfall Trap for when we pass. For now we play the Elven Swordmaster. May your sword and arm be one. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's not supposed to be played like that. Okay, good to know. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> He's going for Corvo, isn't he? He's playing Pincer Maneuver. Thanks for the follow, Abraham. So we're gonna end up playing Erevus Gambit, most likely last round.
Mm. If I'm to die, I'll do so sword in hand. Okay, so he's not going to commit Corvo and his defender if he has it. So we got his leader out of the way. Oh, it goes with Anna instead. Interesting. So we're gonna lock that. Does he play defender? He does not play defender. He goes for destroy an artifact. <laughs> No. Humans are not to be trusted. Actually, it has it. What card is that? Only four provisions. Oh, it's like bomb heaver, but it's yeah, it's also neutral to be honest. It just doesn't give you any uh, points. Left, right, left, right. Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna continue pushing him now. I think. Damage an enemy unit by two, damage two units by one. Uh, we'll go for the pitfall trap. Hey Theo, how are you doing? Resets it. Yay! <laughs> That's awesome. All right, we just passed now, I think. Yeah? Yeah, we just passed now. I'm happy with that actually a good card Not bad idea. Oh, this is going well guys we're actually playing in pro rank just saying I think in order to test the journey deck we need to win in a uh, pro rank to prove that it's worth anything okay so we've got two poison that's good we've got a trap and another trap now we do need to shuffle both of these away if we're going to be playing that other card. Ah, oh, we got Iravith. Yes, yes. Excellent. That's extremely well. Okay, so... If we use our leader well, and well. we get Iravith's Gamut, we're going to play both of our traps. And these need to go off... in about two rounds. Okay, let's go for you first. Reveal a random card from your deck. We start by two. Damage shot by one for each non-dwarf unit in your hand. No. <laughs> Whenever you play a special card, we start by two. Uh, I guess we go for here. Not afraid. You should be. Yeah. What did he play? Uh, I can't recall. He played something like Priscilla, which was charge-based. Hey, oh, play Scorvo, I knew it. Sometimes the price knew it. is too damn. You know it's Scorvo when it's Pincer Maneuver. Um, so we move that real quick. Can't use it anymore unless he moves it back, so it's always good to kill Corva anyway. Always good to kill him anyway. My camera is, is so small. There we go. Okay, there is all Dandy. Problem is Dandy keeps giving points. Okay, so just in case he forfeits, I think we now play Mystic Echo. Play Iris Gambit. I am who I need to be. What do you do again? Whenever your adjacent passes, boost adjacent units by four. Okay, so we're gonna have to put you here. After two turns. Another row with the most units by two. Got it. Yeah, this is problematic. We're gonna have to end up uh, poisoning Corvo. Daisies stand tall, dead one. Just in case he moves it back. Sorry, the light is too much, is it? Ah, it will get better. Okay, I just want to uh, show this how this works. Minute. We move it back, and we play it again. Obviously it doesn't go off again because our opponent already passed, as I understand. And there you go guys, another journey deck for week number four, I believe. Hell yes. And we actually played this in ranked. We are climbing. What a 
are the chances? Look at that. Hell yes, why do you want coming in with the three month sub? <laughs> How are you doing? Yeah, see, we got our artifacts and our traps should also be climbing, right? No, we actually did both of them. We played all the traps and the artifacts. That's a successful deck, right?